हेलो एवरीवन गुड मॉर्निंग टुडे इज इलेवंथ ऑफ मार्च एंड वेलकम टू द न्यूज़पेपर एनालिसिस सो गाइज लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द टुडे इज न्यूज़ पेपर एनालिसिस इन द टुडे इज वीडियो विल बी टेकिंग अप द एंटायर एनालिसिस ऑफ द हिंदू न्यूज़पेपर एंड विल आल्सो सी द इंडियन एक्सप्रेस एक्सप्लेन सेक्शन नो बिफोर मूविंग ऑन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट सी द ओवर ऑफ द एंटायर न्यूज सो दैट वी कैन अंडरस्टैंड विच आर्टिकल विल बी इंपॉर्टेंट नाउ द इंडियन एक्सप्रेस एक्सप्लेन सेक्शन हेयर वी कैन सी दैट जस्ट द रिजल्ट ऑफ द रिसेंट इलेक्शन दैट हैव बीन अनाउंस दे आर दे आर बींग डिस्कस्ड ओके बिलो ऑल्सो द सेम थिंग हैज बीन डिस्कस्ड सो नथिंग इज एक्चुअली वेरी मच सब्सटांशियल इन टू द इंडियन एक्सप्रेस एक्सप्लेन सेक्शन आफ्टर दैट मूविंग टू द हिंदू न्यूज पेपर नो गाइज इन द हिंदू न्यूज पेपर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट सी द टेक्स्ट एंड द कॉन्टेक्सट सेक्शन दैट कम्स now in the text and context section there are certain good articles that usually come now the first article here it is talking about can donbas republic work as a buffer zone so how the donbas can act as a buffer zone in the russia ukraine crisis we'll see this particular thing then uh, what do we know about the newest crater on the moon so on the moon a new crater has been developed fine so what how it happened and what will be why such kind of thing matters we'll see this entire thing in this particular article after that lights camera action authenticity now not important article for respect over upsc examination now let's move in the hindu newspaper the page number 1 the main hindu newspaper now guys we have seen that the election results have been announced so the today's newspaper is majorly filled by the assembly poll results that have come clear uh, though we don't take the political articles and they are not actually even important but guys with respect to the shift in politics that is happening right now an overview i will be giving you from the entire hindu newspaper as well as from the indian express explained section and other articles also we will be doing that particular thing so uh, just the results have been announced here taking kejriwal model to the national level fine after that guys uh, basically moving into the uh, city section the schools are not so easy after 2 years so students who have not been to the school in last 2 years now they say that they are facing the troubles when they are going because they have become too used to study in the comfort of their home so now these problems are coming which are also needed to be dealt in a kind of a good right manner then moving on after that guys the post covid maharashtra recovery all these things not in very much important in this particular direction is given fine moving on then guys here uh, further as we move the kundakulam panchayat adopts a resolution against afr will see that what has been provided here russia ukraine war brews a crisis for kochi tea auction clear so guys uh, basically the kochi's tea is very popular in the ukraine because of this crisis the tea exporters they are, are facing a kind of a problem fine however uh, do no need to go too much in deep in this particular thing now coming to the editorial page this particular article is just talking about the assembly results that have been announced this particular article also talks about the assembly results and the below article okay it is also talking about that how the assembly results provide that the hindu majoritarianism is now deeply embedded into the political system of india so hindu majoritarianism victory assembly polls election assembly poll clear nothing very much important with respect to our upsc examination please completely ignore these articles however i will give you the overview of the political trend and the political shift that is happening in our country clear then coming on to the next page so bipolar election okay which assembly seat was won by which particular political party such kind of a uh, uh, region wise uh, uh, kind of a dissection is given here the same thing is given on to the page number 8 fine and the same thing is continued on page number 9 and the similar thing is even continued on to the page number 10 clear so guys we don't find any article in this particular thing people choose development over caste says prime minister again this particular article talks about the assembly election results that have come russia ukraine talks yield no progress now as the russia ukraine are in a kind of a war and now the russian uh, sorry the ukrainian president had said that we are ready to talk ukrainian president had said that we will not join the nato and even we are ready to talk on the donbas region these talks are going on but nothing has come up till now you don't need to read every day what one party had said what another party had said in the last the conclusion whatever will be coming we'll see this particular thing then guys further moving on uh, doval calls for uh, doval calls for the maritime 
operation so the so basically here we find that the colombo security conclave had held so what is this colombo security conclave we'll see this particular article fine uh, moscow may flag in uh, may engage in false flag chemical attack so guys earlier also i we have discussed about this false flag attack so what is a false flag attack false flag attack is something like this let's suppose let's suppose uh, what will happen let's suppose there are the two regions now suppose uh, here is russia then there is ukraine one is russia one is ukraine now what will happen in the ukraine russia will organize let's say a kind of a war or uh, it will organize a kind of a confrontation and it will say that the confrontation has been sponsored by the ukraine but really the confrontation has been sponsored by the russia and russia will take an excuse that we want to curb this confrontation and therefore we are going for a war so moscow may engage in false flag chemical attack it means that russia will arrange for chemical attack and when those chemical attacks will happen russia will say that these chemical attacks have been carried by the ukraine and by that particular excuse russia will show even more aggression on the ukraine this is something which has been predicted by the usa clear so let's see whether it happens or not then moving on after that the inflation may stay below 6% clear the coal imports from russia may be highest in 2 years now these are all the kind of our trends which come from time to time not very much important with respect to our examination policy matters fine are actually important then we come to the sports page okay so this is guys about the overview of the today's newspaper majorly containing the election related news but some very important other trends are also there we are going to discuss it now let's start with our discussion now as we do in our every class we'll be starting with the gs quote so today we'll be taking the quote from the woodrow wilson woodrow wilson says there is no higher religion than human service to work for the common good is the greatest creed now this particular idea corresponds to the idea that the service to man is the service to god service to man is the service to god so the religion's only purpose is to work for the human in emancipation to work for the human welfare to work for the human service okay and the common good is the biggest good so sarvajan hitay sarvajan sukhay needs to be the goal of the policy makers we can use this particular idea in our gs paper number 4 gs paper number 4 ethics fine so that is all about the quote for today now let's take first of all the mcq answers for the yesterday so the yesterday's mcq correct uh, answer for question number 1 is a and correct answer for the question number 2 will be b you can just pause the video and you can read the explanation now moving to the mcqs for today so first mcq has been taken from the national infrastructure pipeline nip why because guys recently recently we have seen this particular thing that for the national monetization pipeline a different uh, uh, for uh, an agency has been created by the government we have discussed this particular article just yesterday so in this particular line nip has been asked please pause the video read these statements and identify the correct option moving to the question number 2 so question number 2 it is talking about uh, certain of the initiatives with respect to the ministry of agriculture and water initiatives please read the statement and identify the correct op incorrect option so please pause the video and read it you can even download this pdf from our telegram channel the link you can find in description box now moving on okay uh okay uh, very good morning to everyone sir please conduct session and share a day wise strategy for days left to prelims okay uh, dear i'll try that if we can do one any live session on this particular thing and guys if you want to have a live q and a session please do let me know if there will be uh, need we will try to arrange for that okay now so uh, you might all have seen up till now that the assembly poll results in the five states they have been announced when we see now do political news are not important but being an aware citizen you need to be careful about the trends that are evolving so very briefly we will see so we find that in the uttarakhand fine just a minute so what we find we find that in the uttarakhand the bjp is going to uh, the bjp had got the majority here fine the bjp had got the majority the 47 seats have been got by the bjp then in uttar pradesh also the bjp had got majority 2/3 of the seats have been won by bjp then in manipur also the bjp had bjp had got a kind of a majority it had achieved the seats more than 50% now when we talk about the punjab in punjab the aam aadmi party is going to make the government as they had made the majority here and in goa out of 40 the 20 seats have been got by the bjp and by having by making a kind of a coalition 
fine the bjp will also be forming the government here in the goa also just one more support or one more seat they need to form a government fine so this is something that is the result that out of the five states out of the five states in the four states eventually the bjp is going to make the government there and one state the punjab the aam aadmi party is going to form the government here now what are the trends that we find here in this particular assembly polls number one guys we find here that a unique combination had become victorious in this particular election and from past few years this particular trend is emerging identity appeals welfare promises and strongman rhetoric has helped the parties to win the election see in india we find this particular thing that uh, usually we say that in a democracy people cast their vote but in india it is said that people vote their caste this was a unique combination that was there but now we see that the caste politics have become probably a kind of a thing of a past because the samajwadi party fine and then we find this particular thing that the uh, bsp now they are no longer stronger so today the identity appeal identity around a persona identity around a charismatic leader it has become important now when we talk about the BJP, BJP's victory. BJP's victory is centered around two of the strong identities: identity of Yogi Adityanath and identity of our Prime Minister Narendra Modi. And in the Punjab, as the Aam Aadmi Party had won, so there the personality of uh, Mr. Arvind Kejriwal had played a very important role. So identity appeal today has become more important than the caste appeal that was there. However, in the states such as the Bihar, we still find that the caste is important. In some regional fractions, the caste is important, but identity is becoming more stronger. Moreover, the welfare promises now had taken a center stage and this example we find into the Punjab. So the Punjab, the Aam Aadmi Party that had won, it had come because of the welfare promises that it had fulfilled into the Delhi, particularly into the two areas that is the health and education. And the strongman rhetoric, strongman rhetoric, the person who can drive the things. So the strongman rhetoric is very much visible in the name of Prime Minister Mr. Modi and in the name of Arvind Kejriwal of AAP who had won the election in Punjab. So the these are now guys we find this particular thing that in india now uh, basically you find this particular thing uh, that uh, notable social scientist rajani kothari rajani kothari a uh, few years back had provided that eventually in india a new elite structure will emerge a new elite structure will emerge now what is this elite structure guys elite structure see first of all we find that in india there was a dynasty politics that was very supreme and the dynasty politics was seen in the form of the congress party now the elite structure is that there are certain individuals that are emerging and because of their personality they have a big political cloud they have a strong grip over the country and this elite structure we can see into the name of mr modi and our um, uh, um, leader Arvind Kejriwal. So this is something that is oriented. So again the caste oriented social justice plank or the caste as a mobilization strategy is at the lowest point. Moreover we find this particular thing also that into the Uttar Pradesh there is nearly complete decimation of the Bahujan Samaj party that has happened and as the Bahujan Samaj party became flat the benefit that have been reaped is by the BJP. The voters which moved from the BSP they had went to the BJP and this is something that had worked into the favor of the BJP. Then further moving on, now guys when we talk about the Punjab, so Punjab has taken a different kind of a decision here and they had it moved to the alternative politics. Now the alternative politics came after the coming of the Aam Aadmi Party. Now earlier the Aam Aadmi Party's leader was seen as an anti-establishment leader. So now the alternative politics have been chosen and out of 170, 92 seats have been won by uh, the Aam Aadmi Party and I told you welfare schemes such as the health and education had drived the people. Moreover guys we see here that a Shiromani Akali Dal fine it had lost completely its appeal. So the Sikh religious politics which was very much important into the Punjab the Panthic politics that was very important in Punjab around 15 to 20 years back and before that now that particular thing is fading away. Moreover, uh, this, this particular thing you all know that in the last year there was a lot of farmer protests that was happening and it was and the epicenter was Punjab and it was believed that the farmers, the farmer led front will become victorious or will achieve something substantial and into such kind of direction, Sanyukta Samaj Morcha 
clear which was an a, a kind of an amalgamation of 22 punjab based farmer outfits okay they actually led the agitation against the center three farm laws and they were also the parties that they supported were actually also not able to make a very big kind of dent so this is something also that is to be observed now when we talk about the manipur so what has happened in a manipur there is a unique trend that manipur has more or less voted for the party that is at the center why because manipur depends a lot onto the central government for the grants for their development. So as going with the trend, the BJP had been given a lot of support into the Manipur. When uh, the Metis, the Metis wanted the special status into the Manipur, they did not, uh, they were not able to influence that much of the election, uh, the politics. So the, they had voted for the center, okay, because they are dependent on uh, to the state government for large number of grants. Then when we see the Goa, in Goa we see that onto the out of the 40 seats, 20 seats have been won by the BJP. Now the BJP has tested a unique formula here that is the maximum winnability formula. What is this maximum winnability formula? They had very carefully selected those candidates which have a lot of public appeal and they can, uh, who can be won very easily. So the maximum winnability, they very carefully picked up the candidates, placed them and they won. And this particular time we will see that there will be no unstable politics in the Goa as had happened earlier. When we talk about Uttarakhand, in Uttarakhand the BJP had retained the power but there is one thing that might be embarrassing the BJP is that uh, Mr. Pushpar Pushkar Dami, the chief minister, he has lost the seat. He has lost the seat. So it is a kind of an embarrassment. And because he had lost the seat, there will be a new chief minister who has to be selected for the Uttarakhand. And guys, this will be the fourth chief minister for Uttarakhand in, in just a one year that is going to happen. So this is something that has happened. Now guys, in this particular thing, what is a bigger trend that is emerging? So the bigger trend is this, that guys, now when we talk about the 2024 the next parliamentary elections that are going to happen what are the alternatives here so if i tell you very frankly today the indian politics has reached to such a state that today against the bjp there is only one serious person or serious party which can give the competition that is the aam admi party but when we see the aam admi party it is not having much of a very clear and much of a very organized political structure a secondly the party is consolidated around just one or two leader particularly the arvind kejriwal and mr manish sisodia apart from that no other big level leaders having the national appeal they are not there so aam admi party is only contender but still very much not uh, a kind of a very clear match to the BJP. The Congress has completely lost its relevance as we see that in the Punjab also the Congress has completely lost. Today there is a kind of a weak coalition that could emerge that is containing some of the regional parties then the leftist parties okay regional parties leftist parties they are just a kind of a coalition in this you can include the Congress you don't include the Congress Congress doesn't hold any relevance today. So a very weak coalition is there into the front of BJP. So there in 2024, we have seen that what is going to happen. So right now, guys, we need to have a strong opposition. Opposition is something which always makes a democracy vibrant. Opposition is something which keeps the ruling party into the check and at times provide the constructive criticism to the ruling party. And given this constructive criticism, ruling party adheres to the constitutionalism that happens to be the bedrock of a democracy. So this is something that is to be kept in mind and the opposition parties they need to lace up their shoes okay and need to work on their strategies so this is guys the entire overview of the election now we have not discussed it into the light of the politics and such kind of things we have discussed into the light of an academic dimension as where the politics is leading i hope you have understood it now we'll be moving to the next article now, this particular article we have taken from the Hindu newspaper, Can Donbass Republics Work as a Buffer Zone? Okay, now this particular article we can see under the light of international affairs, international affairs, clear? Now, moving on, first of all, let's understand what is this Donbass region? So guys, here, first of all, see this particular map. In the map, here you can find this is Ukraine. Here we find that this one is Russia. Here we have the Sea of Azov. Here we have the Crimea, here we have Black Sea, fine. 
now you know this particular thing that first of all right now the russia and ukraine are at war russia had invaded over the ukraine now why russia had invaded over the ukraine russia says that there are certain reasons reason number one that ukraine said that we are going to join the nato north atlantic treaty organization now nato is a military alliance led by the usa and you know that the USA and USS are always at the confrontation. If the Ukraine will become the member of the NATO, it means that the USA's presence will come just into their neighborhood. And the Russia says that the Ukraine joining the NATO will be the threat to the Russian sovereignty into the long term. So therefore, they had invaded the Ukraine. Second reason is that that the you uh, that the Russia it has also provided that actually this is the Donbas region. This is the Donbas region. In the Donbas region, there are two of the two of the oblasts that are there, two of the regions that are there within the Donbas. That is the Donetsk and there is Luhansk. Donetsk and Luhansk. Now, guys, these Donetsk and the Luhansk, they are more pro-Russian. They are more pro-Russian and they want either to become a republic or they want to join the Russia. 70% of people here, they speak Russian. They follow, they connect more with the Russian culture. Now the Russia had said this particular thing that since 2014, since 2014, the Donbass region want to become a republic. But the Ukrainian forces, they are committing the atrocities onto the people of Donbass. And now in order to protect the people of Donbass, Bus, the Russia had taken a stand against the Ukraine. This is number two reason. Number three reason that has been provided is that the Ukrainian government presently it is more pro West and they want to install a neutral government. They don't say that we want to install a pro Russian government. They say that we want to install a neutral government into the Ukraine. So therefore, this particular thing has been done. Russia says that in humanitarian in in humanitarian gesture they have led the protest here. What is humanitarian gesture? protecting the people into the Donbass. This is an excuse that has been given by the Russia. Now guys, before that, in 2014, 2000, in 2014, this Crimea was also acquired by the Russia. Now why the Crimea was acquired by the Russia? I had told you multiple number of times. See, the Crimea is in Black Sea. Now, if the Russia got the access to the Crimea, what will happen? Crimea is called as a permanent, permanent warship in the Black Sea. From the Black Sea, the accessibility to the Mediterranean can be taken. Now, Russia, though it has a very long coastline, but majority of the ports of Russia, they are the cold ports. What are these cold ports? Cold water ports. It means they are frozen throughout the year. So, the Black Sea, Black Sea and the Crimea is very important because here there is a warm water port that is there. They are not frozen throughout the year. They are open and they can be used to mobilize their naval troops in Mediterranean and then through the other oceans. So Crimea has already been taken. Now it is being said that actually the only possible that this invasion of Ukraine can be stopped and the only possible way that how this ongoing war can be stopped is that by by recognizing the Donbass Republic, by recognizing the independence or the sovereignty of the Donbass. Now understand, can this particular thing happen? Can within a country, okay, you see right now, just a minute, you see, uh, just a minute. So what we see here, as of now, as of now, if we see as a part of the political map, as a part of the political map, Donbass is still into the Ukraine. So how within the Ukraine, the Donbass's sovereignty can be recognized? So guys, it has been provided that actually this practice exists right now. Right now, there are the three region, there are the three regions in the two countries which are having such kind of sovereignty. Number one, there is Abkhazia. There is Abkhazia in the northwestern Georgia. So Georgia is a country in the Georgia. There is Abkhazia. Then there is the uh, the Transnistria. Now Transnistria is in Moldova, and then there is the South Ossetia. Now the South Ossetia is in Georgia. So South Ossetia into the Georgia, uh, Abkhazia into again Georgia, and the Moldova. Uh, sorry, the Transnistria into the Moldova. So Abkhazia, Transistria and the South Ossetia, these are the three regions which are existing into their respective countries but at the same time they have been given the internal sovereignty. They have been given the internal sovereignty but not the external sovereignty. It means that their external relations with the other country will be dictated by their mother country but internally they have a lot of autonomy. Clear? Though not a very refined, though not a very refined comparison but guys as before the scrap 
स्क्रैपिंग ऑफ आर्टिकल थ्री हंड्रेड एंड सेवेंटी जम्मू एंड कश्मीर है वॉज गिवन अ काइंड ऑफ एन ऑटोनॉमी क्लियर सिमिलरली ऑन टू दैट लाइन बट मच मोर देन बट मच मोर देन द जम्मू कश्मीर द ऑटोनॉमी हैज बिन गिवन टू दीज थ्री पर्टिकुलर रीजन्स नाउ इट हैज बिन प्रोवाइडेड दैट दीज आर द डी फैक्टो और द पैरा स्टेट्स दीज आर द डी फैक्टो और द पैरा स्टेट्स दे आर नॉट द डी जी ओर स्टेट दे आर नॉट रिकोगनाइज बाय द ग्लोबल कॉम्युनिटी बट विद इन इंटरनली दे हैव बिन गिवन अ लॉट मोर ऑटोनॉमी सो इट हैज नाउ दीज थ्री टेरिटरीज दैट इज द अबकाजिया द ट्रांसिस्ट्रिया एंड द ओसेटिया ऑल दीज थ्री टेरिटरीज इट हैज बिन प्रोवाइडेड दैट That they have a large connection with the Russia. Fine, the Russia is their patron state. They cannot survive without the economic, political, and military support from the Moscow. Okay, they are the client states of the Russia. So basically, as these three states are existing into the same way, the Donbas in the same way, the Donbas can be given an internal sovereignty. clear and not an external sovereignty and on this particular line a solution can be sought but a question comes here that will the russia uh, is today russia can act as a security guarantor can russia provide the economic support that is needed for the donbas region because it happens to be a very big region clear can this particular support be provided by russia if yes then there could be a possibility that donbas can exist as a kind of a region which is having a lot of internal autonomy is it clear so this is something which could be there it has been provided in this particular article now moving to the next article what we know about the newest crater on the moon okay so guys uh, basically first of all what has happened in this particular article i will tell you some of a background and then we will be moving on so let's take first of all the background so guys the background goes like this that recently what has happened there is one object that has hit on the moon and it has actually created a crater on the moon now what is this object see this is the space junk this is space junk okay what is the space junk see you know that large number of satellites are being released into the space there are the satellites there are the rockets there are the propellers there are many of other kind of fragments of fine broken components of the of the of the rockets etc that are there now these objects they are rotating into the outer space and it is called as the space junk it is called as a space junk by the way this space junk is a very big nuance okay it is many times it is seen that these space space junk even pose a threat to the live satellites that are there so there was one very big piece of a space junk that had created an impact on to the moon and this is the first time in the history that unintentionally a space junk had had created an impact on to the moon number one it calls into the action that over the coming years a threat threat by the the threat by the space junk is very much big now guys what was this space junk so basically it has been said that this space junk it is the part of the third booster Uh, the third stage booster rocket of Chang'e 5T1 lunar mission of China. So China launched the Chang'e 5 lunar mission. So of when that lunar mission was launched, third stage booster. Okay, that is this space junk which had created an impact onto the space. Now China has denied. China had said that no, it is not the part of our rocket because our rocket it entered into the earth and it got completely burned. It got completely incinerated. So no, it is not the part of China. But it is being claimed that it is the part of China. Is it clear? However, that is something in which we don't need to go. Now what has happened? First of all, this is the first time that a piece of space junk had unintentionally uh, had created a crater onto the moon. Right now, what are the missions that can more clearly uh, observe that what actually impacted onto the moon? There is number one, NASA's lunar. a reconnaissance orbiter mission that is there and then there is isro's chandrayaan 2 these are the two active lunar missions and they are capable of observing the, and uh, observing observing the crater that has made an impact they can take a picture but there is one more problem is that basically this impact that has been made it is on to the far side of the moon and on the far far side of the moon there might be a little bit problem in observing this particular thing now guys understand this particular thing when you see the moon on moon we find that there are 
आर लार्ज नंबर ऑफ क्रेटर्स दैट हैव बीन देयर इन द पास्ट सी मल्टीपल ऑब्जेक्ट्स पर्टिकुलरली द एस्टोरॉइड्स दे हैव हिट द अर्थ एज वेल एज मून बट वेन वी सी द मून द मून स्ट्रक्चर सीम्स मोर रगेड वट इज द रीजन दैट एवरी क्रेटर एवरी इंपैक्ट ऑन मून इज सो मच विजिबल बट नॉट दैट मच विजिबल इन टू द अर्थ सो रीजन इज दैट गाइज दैट वेन वी टॉक अबाउट द अर्थ देर आर पर्टिकुलर प्रोसेसिस एंडोजेनिक एंड एक्जोजेनिक प्रोसेसिस दैट आर देयर फाइन फॉर एग्जाम्पल द सॉइल इरोजन इज हैपनिंग टेक्टॉनिक प्रोसेस इज देयर वॉलकैनिज्म इज देयर ऑल दीज प्रोसेस हैड एक्चुअली मेड अर्थ लिटल और मोर फ्लैट एंड मून हैज नॉट मून इज नॉट हैविंग ऑल दीज प्रोसेस एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट वट एवर इम्पैक्ट इज देयर और वट एवर क्रिएटर इज क्रिएटेड ऑन मून इट बिकम्स मोर ऑफ अ परमानेंट फिनोमिना क्लियर टूडे इफ वी सी द अर्थ इट हैज लेस देन टू हंड्रेड नोन क्रेटर्स Fine. It is not that less number of asteroids had impacted the Earth. Many thousands have impacted, but right now just two hundred are there because others have been made flat because of the atmospheric processes. On Moon, there is no uh, there is no atmosphere or a very uh, very scarce atmosphere is there. And because on the Moon atmosphere is very scarce, what happens? The wind system is not very much strong because the wind system is not very much strong. The withering on the Moon is not there, and because the withering is not there, the craters are a permanent. phenomena there there is no creation there is no uh, uh, erosion of the crater after that there is the tectonic process also that is not there onto the moon because of the tectonics and the volcanism what happens first particularly because of the volcanism new rocks are being built new rocks are being built because of the tectonic processes earthquakes etc also the areas the topography is being changed but because the tectonic activity and volcanic activity is also very much less onto the moon so therefore the crater that are being created onto the moon they are a kind of a permanent phenomena and they are going to stay there okay so this is guys all about this particular thing so please keep it in your mind now moving to the next article doval calls for maritime cooperation clear so guys this particular article is talking about the colombo security conclave colombo security conclave fine now what is this colombo security conclave we are going to discuss in this particular article so basically you know this particular thing that guys when we talk about the india fine india is having the coastline of more than 7500 km and because india having a large number of 7500 km plus coastline for india's maritime cooperation maritime security preventing the maritime piracy becomes a very much important thing and in order to protect the maritime secure in order to work on to the maritime cooperation what happened the india sri lanka and maldives they had came out together and they had they, they have worked on the trilateral initiative on indian ocean maritime security now this trilateral initiative on indian ocean maritime security has been given the name of colombo security conclave where these three countries are working what they do here basically into this colombo security conclave they share the intelligence with each other they collaborate on four pillars number 1 security cooperation will be done including the maritime security fine so that the event such as the mumbai attacks that had happened the terrorist there came from the sea such kind of events again don't happen so the marine security security cooperation will be done secondly human trafficking will be prevented third pillar is the counter terrorism and the fourth pillar is the cyber security so on these four pillars these three countries will be cooperating in the colombo security conclave now the mauritius has also joined it now what had happened the mauritius the mauritius has also joined this particular conclave so four countries now come together now in this particular thing the india had said that india is committed and india will work in close cooperation with our maritime neighbors such as the sri lanka maldives okay all the maritime neighbors we will be working very so in a in a collaborative manner and we will build the capacity of all our neighbors through regular training the supply of equipment supply of equipment fine we will helping the countries in upgrading their coastal security installation exchange of information will be there clear and countering threat uh, capacity will also be built so on the maritime cooperation india had just now done the nsa level talks okay nsa level talks and there the maritime cooperation has been affirmed by the india so this is something that has happened now guys not in itself a kind of a full fledged answer can be formed in this particular line but when we talk about the maritime strategy of india the indian ocean strategy when we talk about fine such kind of references can be given and they further authenticate our answer clear that is about it now moving to the next article kundakulam panchayat adopts resolution against afr clear 
Now, just uh, the Kundakulam Panchayat's resolution is not that important, but this particular issue, what is going on, we need to see here. Now, guys, first of all, when we talk about the Kundakulam, when we talk about Kundakulam, it is in Tamil Nadu. Okay, Kundakulam, it is in Tamil Nadu. Now, in the Kundakulam, what happen, What is there? We are making a nuclear power plant. We are making a nuclear power plant. The talks for making a nuclear power plant, it got started way back in 1988. And the nuclear power plant in Kundakulam, it is being made by the Russian assistance. By the Russian assistance. Okay, here <coughs> we are building the pressurized water reactor. Pressurized water reactor are being built. Now the construction of the Kundakulam power plant is being done by the two of the organization that is the NPCIL that is the NC, N, NPCIL that is the Nuclear Power Corporation of India Limited and the Russian agency that is the Atoms Atoms uh, Atoms Tro Export okay Atoms Tro Export and the NPCIL they are carrying the construction when this particular project will be completed when all the nuclear reactors will be installed it this particular plant will have a cumulative capacity of 2 gigawatt 2 gigawatt of electric power will be generated by the Kundakulam power plant now understand this particular thing guys that today as we talk about reducing the carbon emission there the nuclear energy becomes a kind of a viable solution by tapping the uranium by tacking tapping on the nuclear technologies we can produce immense electricity without the carbon footprint but at the same time the nuclear energy has become criticized also particularly after the fukushima disaster of the japan in the fukushima disaster of japan we have seen that the nuclear meltdown happened before that the chernobyl event of the ukraine was there and there were also the three mile incident of the usa in all of them the nuclear meltdown happened and a lot of catastrophe happened so whenever the nuclear plants are there the people are not very much positive they feel that there will be the security lapses that are going to be there in this particular way even into the kundakulam also there have been the large number of protest since 2011 they say that if a tsunami came or if some kind of a problem or if some kind of a operational failure happened the people they will be impacted the people will be impacted here so people are not very much positive on this kundakulam plant now guys the kundakulam the panchayat had adopted a new resolution against the afr what is this afr so guys the afr it stands for away from reactor afr stands for away from reactor facility what is this away from reactor facility understand this particular thing now you know that this particular plant will use the nuclear material it will use the nuclear material now there will be the burn uh, there will be the spent rods there will be the spent rods see basically the nuclear material the fissile material okay the uh, basically the leftovers where they will be the where they will be discarded so they will be discarded into a facility which is called as the away from reactor now away from reactor this is a project site for storing the nuclear waste now this particular afr facility is being built little bit away from the kundakulam now the village panchayat is saying that this particular thing will pose a danger to the people because the nuclear waste that is emitted that nuclear waste will still be radioactive and this will stay radioactive for next 70 crore years it will stay radioactive for next 70 crore years and what will happen it will pollute the it will make the nearby water bodies radioactive its radiation will be problematic for the people okay many of the chronic diseases they might be getting because of the increased radiation now the government had said that all this particular nuclear waste will be stored 15 meter below the ground it will be stored 15 meter below the ground but still there are the threats that there could be spillage that can happen there could be leakage that can happen and this particular spillage or this particular leakage might impact okay so this is for this particular thing the panchayat has adopted a resolution that please don't construct this afr even the chief minister had urged the prime minister that please don't construct this afr away from reactor facility for storing of the nuclear waste now let's see what happens in this particular regard so this is the entire issue that has been there so guys these are all the issues in the today's newspaper now we have already seen in the overview that the today's newspaper is completely filled the election results that had come so very few articles were there but 
good articles so i hope that you have understood this particular thing and uh, this is all about this okay uh, sir please do answer writing class whenever possible and ethics class okay see um, as of now i might not be able to commit that uh, uh, when we can do it but if a possibility emerges i'll try to do that thing okay fine so however uh, with respect to the current affairs whatever the ethical issues are coming okay i usually do take it in our uh, the newspaper analysis also so let's see what can be done on that particular capacity okay uh, so that is all for the today's analysis guys now we'll be meeting tomorrow till then please take care of yourselves i hope you're liking it okay if you liked it as a symbolic gesture please do hit a like button please do leave a comment thank you so much